Good afternoon, I'm Mitchell. Welcome to my shop. And this video is about mounting a cow and one of my pet peeves, and before I go any further, you know, the reason this is a hobby and everybody can do what they want to, but one of my pet peeves has always been when you're mounting a cow, is putting the screws this way. And then you got this ugly screw here and you got this beautiful airplane and you put in the screws here. Um, it's always been a pet peeve of mine. So this is the way I do it. And it's with magnets. And I'm going to show that. And I know what you're thinking. You know, I've got one cow here. Why do I have two cows? Well, we're building three of these airplanes together. And so we got multiple cows. So this is a good opportunity to show you how it's done. And it's real simple. Held on with two little 440 um, bolts. And that's all that holds the cow on. And the magnets work tremendously well. They're real strong. And it just makes everything cleaner and easy. And you have to do maintenance on the airplane. You know, two little bolts, pull the prop off, boop, cows off, and it just makes life a lot easier. So stay tuned. Here we go. We're going to do a magnet cow. I went ahead and mounted the cow to the wall here because um, it's not quite ready to. We need to do sheeting on the, on the fuselage before we get to this point. But... I needed a way to show you how easy this comes off. Now, if you look right here, it moves a little bit. And once you go in here and put, right with my fingers out, a 440 bolt in this area, one here and here, it secures this cow to where it can't move no more. And just two little bolts. And I've been doing this for several years and it works great. Um, and it makes that cow solid and rigid without having any ugly screws on the outside. So here we go. So to get one off, once you pull these two 440 bolts out, you would basically just grab the cow and you just pull it off. And you can see it's just got roof and nails, which these need to be um, cut off and dulled. So now just to get it back on, you just line them up and it's pretty easy. Of course, you'll be doing this from the back of the airplane. It's a whole lot easier. And that's it. There it is, it's all in, and once I said, once you get this put, and we hide it behind this little vent, so you can't see it and everything, the scale and neat, but that's the first part of the process. I really wanted you to see um, the way the, the firewall's mounted and the way we just put the roof and nails in through this way, and then you can see it. the magnets are actually in little blocks, and I'm gonna show more of that. And then it's just, and then another important thing is the type of glue we use. It's high saw. It sticks to this. You need to sand this. You need to sand this and then take some alcohol and clean it up to make sure you get the best bond you get. I crashed the plane uh, and busted the cow through here in this area. And it allowed it to kind of spring with these magnets. And it saved the cow. But it also, none of these blocks broke out. So it's a, it's. It's been four or five years I've been doing this on other airplanes and I've never had an issue with them. So, all right, let's get the building. So every kit cutter manufacturer is different. Uh, there's two different companies here. This company made the, the firewall out of one piece. So we just drilled through the back and it was quite simple. Uh, I like this. And this is another kit cutter. And to get this thickness, you they send you two plates that you have to glue together to get the thickness of this one. So I like this company a little bit better because uh, to me, that's just a little more secure than having to glue two together. Uh, but it does give me an opportunity to do something with the roof and nail is to drill my holes and put it back this way and then sandwich it all together. And then also the magnets we use, of course they have a hole in them and they come from this company. It's uh, K and J Magnets. Let's see if we get a picture of that here so you guys can know where to get it from. And so and then here's our, our, our F1 piece. And you can tell that it's, if you hear that, it's got a little warp in it. You don't want to glue that way because huh, it's big glued, you know. And you can, when we glue this on the crutch, we can take that out with no problem with the stringers but yeah there's a little bit of warp there and that's kind of common in all these kits when they cut this stuff out the plywood just kind of releases its tension and and that's what you get 
the magnet blocks, of course, I've got to cut each of these off, but I just pre-set uh, my uh, drill press and just drill these down. And the magnets, basically, they get high sawed in, and they just go like that, and they click in real easy. Um, and then, of course, it just goes onto that. And so that's, where, that's all the parts we're going to need to complete this cow. So I'm fixing to um, put these uh, cow blocks in. And then you can see I number them one, two, three, four, five. And what I do is I place them over, get them lined up, and then I take a hammer and just hammer it in. And then that, what that does is that gives you your, that gives you where you need to drill. And I just drilled each of those out. And then we're going to put the nails through the back and then I'll show you how I do that. You just take the nail, put it in, and we drive her home. Go to the edge of your table. Try to get as far as you can in, but it don't have to be too far. And that's pretty much it. They go very fast, very easily. There we go. And the reason we number them is because even though you drill that in the center, sometimes it's a little off. So it's so I've got a you can tell I've got a a one and an error. So I know that that goes just like that. Whoops, wrong way. It goes like that. Huh. It goes down, and then you just put all your cowl blocks in. See where's number four? Four is this way. Two. You're kind of getting it's pretty simple. Number five. And that's all we have to do. And I'm just gonna run some thin CA around these just to kind of lock everything in. You probably don't have to do this, but we're just gonna run some thin CA and let that soak in. And also one more thing I wanted to mention is when from the original design of, of from the plans, the way we're doing this is, is we're going in on the lip, probably a quarter of an inch, if not more, in from the original plans. This was actually designed to be flush with, let's see if I can pull this out. Yeah. The magnets are so strong, I can't get it out. It's actually meant to be more like that. So we are going in a little further, but it just makes the cow stronger when you go inside like that. So keep that in mind. If you're doing measurement from the plans in your cow, your cow's gonna be in just a quarter of an inch if you go this route. Let's see if that's dry. And this, and this is just a spacer piece. I'm gonna lay it back here. It serves no purpose other than to get the correct spacing that I want here because you can tell there is a lip. There's a little bit of a lip here and that's for this former right here. So when you glue this onto, this is glued onto your crutch like this, you know, it, in the sheetings around here, it's just going to fit tight. It works really well and these you'll never have to worry about coming out because all this is going to be sandwiched in together. So it really you don't have to put uh, CA in here, but I did anyway. I kind of overbuild just a bit. Of course, uh, I weight the center down, and these are magnets, so they hold themselves really well, so you know where you're at. But this is just wax paper. Just go over your nail and down. You don't have to worry about doing anything else because the cow will, will go in. There. This is just so nothing sticks to this part. So this is another really easy part to do just to keep the high saw from sticking. Now this one kind of tore a little bit. I'm going to use another one because it's really important. We don't want any glue 
seeping out. But really, glue shouldn't be around these parts anyway. It's going to be on the edges, but I'm just going to put those there just to be sure. And I'm just going to pop these in. Well, actually, I can't pop those in. I need to mix my glue and do that later. Now I'm using business cards because remember, we got sheeting that comes around the whole cowl. And if you put this against this um, the firewall and push it in, um, it's not going to fit. So we got to do spacing to go around here. And I'm just going to do that uh, wherever I can throughout the cowl to make sure we are centered. Now one of the things you want to do, you want to look down in here and make sure that you don't have any wrinkles uh, kind of like there, but that's not, but the little line right here shows that the wrinkle's not in the way because we want everything to sit flush and down. Now this next step is gonna be very important is gonna be using the high saw. This is the high saw that I use. Let's see if you guys can see that. And before I got ready to this point, I sanded a little bit on the cow and used lacquer thinner and cleaned all of it because all this stuff usually has a mold release, which is um, not good. You need to sand it off and use some lacquer thinner and clean material. Well, this stuff may not stick, but this is really good stuff. And we're gonna coat one up. I wanted to do an overhead view um, and show you guys all this, but unfortunately, that was not able to do. I just couldn't get the angle and work, and so you guys are not gonna be able to see that part. Of course, you want to coat the right side, one with the arrow, and then I usually go in a little bit on the cow. I find what happened is some of this will get squeezed it off as we go down. That's it. So everything's in, everything's weighted down. Now we just have to let it sit and uh, go from there. Of course, this is the other cow. And I noticed that one of the blocks didn't get quite enough, a little bit of an air bubble. So we always, this is expensive stuff, this high saw. So you always use it on other things. And I'm just gonna Pack some high saw in there and make sure we got a nice, good contact. We're gonna make a little bit of a fillet here. And you can always tell from the outside if you got the void done properly. That's one thing about a clear cow, it works quite nice. Then we just clean that up a little bit with a paper towel. And we're done. Perfect. So that's pretty much done. Uh, this is done. We just kind of let it dry. The extra glue, you can tell we don't have any any glue left over, so we was able to fill in some voids. There's still some more we want to do, but we'll do that later when we get any extra. But we'll always remember we got some to put glue here. And that's just a good way, to good practice to keep um, that extra high dollars, high saw, to keep it used and use every drop of it. Alrighty, it's a new day. We're gonna take everything apart. Hopefully. It works the first time. But one thing I didn't show you guys was that I do hold each block down with a little weight. Let's see if I can get you guys in there. So those little blocks, that keeps the wooden blocks down. It keeps everything from um, uh, lifting up so we get a nice tight bond. So here we go. Let's hope this all works the first time. Nothing sticks too bad. So it's up. Let's see what we got one more. See what we got. Pretty tight. Pretty 
time. Let's get these cards out of here. They're making a mess. So your first time you take this off, it's always just going to be a little bit uh, tight. Boy, this ain't giving me a fit here. I believe I about got it. Oh, there it goes. Unfortunately, one block did not survive. Uh, it's stuck on here. I'm going to have to pry it off. Get this off. There it comes. Yeah, I got some glue. You see, I got glue on the pin. And that really made me break. I had to break it loose to get this loose. But anyway, the rest of them are on there. And you can tell it took fiberglass off right there. Uh, and so some wood still stuck in here. We'll have to clean that up and re-put that back on again. Oh well, such is life. But it's pretty much done. Um, it's just that I had a little bit of a hic hiccup there. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, I don't think we need to see gluing one block back in. That's um, my fault. I got a little sloppy with the glue and I paid a price for it. For this one, I was much neater, and it came out perfectly. For this one, I had to pry that loose and break it loose to get it off. Um, but you can see the back of this. See the nice spacing all the way around for the sheeting. Everything is now nice and it's flush. So this cow's done. Other than we'll we'll put that one back in. But that, like I said, that was my fault. I got sloppy, got it on the pin. I paid a price for it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. But that's the way I do my cow blocks. And then, of course, once we get it mounted on the airplane and everything is installed, we will be putting 440 little bolts here to keep the cow secure to the fuselage. And if you have any questions, um, put some comments in, and I'll try to answer all the uh, comments there if you have any questions on this. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Thanks so much, guys.